Uh, so welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Deirdre Pickerel. I'm the Dean of Student Success at York Bay University and Eternal Film School. And on behalf of the Student Success team, I am very pleased to welcome you to today's diversity and inclusion information session. This is something we do quarterly, uh, welcoming our school community to engage in important conversations related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Of course, I will now turn it over to the star of, of the show, uh, Tamina Jaffrey, our uh, diversity consultant. Tamina, right over Thank to you. you. Thank you so much, Deirdre, and, and welcome everybody uh, to this introduction webinar to the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Office, which is for both Yorkville University and Toronto Film School students. So I'm going to start us off with an Indigenous land acknowledgement. Um, we acknowledge that the land Toronto Film School operates on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In Yorkville University, we operate on the traditional territory in Ontario of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. We also acknowledge that the applicable treaty for this region is referred to as the Toronto Purchase. In British Columbia, we operate on the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples of the Kakite and Kwikwetlam First Nations and in New Brunswick, we operate on the traditional territory of the Wabanaki Confederacy, the Mi'kmaq, and the Wolostic Malasite First Nation. We also acknowledge that the applicable treaties for this region are referred to as the Peace and Friendship Treaties. We do these land acknowledgements at Toronto Film School and Yorkville University to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and cultures. So I do want to present um, our wonderful new presidents that we have at both Yorkville University and Toronto Film School who have just joined us. That's Dr. Julia Christensen Hughes, who's the president of Yorkville University and Andrew Barnsley, who's the president of Toronto Film School. And our institutional message is that diversity, equity and inclusion are very much a critical component of life at both Yorkville University and Toronto Film School. And we're committed to making these values and integral part of our culture. Just as we're committed to academic and professional excellence, we're also committed to providing educational services and employment that is focused on promoting the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I had wanted to give a little bit of a intro to myself as well. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Tamina Jaffrey, uh, also known as TJ in some circles um, at both YU and TFS. And I'm here to help uh, faculty, students, and staff with advice and consultation on diversity, equity, and inclusion matters. I'm also uh, responsible for implementing our new proposed diversity and inclusion strategic plan and our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the classroom. And you're more than welcome to connect with me at my email address, tjaferi at yorkvilleu.ca. So I wanted to get into um, some actual definitions of diversity, equity, and inclusion. These are sometimes contested concepts where people are sort of wondering, you know, what does this actually mean? So when we are looking at diversity, we're, we're really considering that whole wide range of human characteristics, um, including but not limited to the uh, human rights protected grounds that are covered in uh, legislation um, or that we have in each province around uh, um, uh, these various grounds such as disability, marital status, family status, um, creed, citizenship, sexual orientation, but diversity also goes beyond these uh, human rights protected grounds to include other aspects of our identities such, of our, such as our socioeconomic status, our educational background, our literacy level, and our geographical region as well. Um, so there's a lot of different aspects that are intersecting uh, within our own identities and that really have an impact on the type of lived experience that we have when we are uh, both in the workplace and also um, in learning environments as well. 
when we're speaking about equity, this is really acknowledging that we're not all starting from a level playing field uh, when we're talking about equal access to opportunities and services. So this does require the removal of barriers. Um, so it's very much an active uh, type of um, initiative where we are uh, removing barriers that marginalized equity seeking communities face in trying to obtain this type of access. So an example of that is that maybe a student um, who has a disability, so they might be blind and they use a screen reader, they might actually need a document that relates to their course or their program uh, in a more accessible format. So maybe they have a document in a PDF format and they're requesting um, a more accessible Word format. And so that would be an example of removing a barrier by working with that student to understand their, their unique needs um, on the basis of their uh, unique diversity dimensions in order to provide a solution um, that meets those needs. And then inclusion is really about making sure that everyone can feel welcome in the academic and workplace environments and that they're able to bring their authentic selves uh, to both the education and work spheres. As I mentioned, we are implementing a new proposed diversity and inclusion strategic plan, uh, which very much highlights Yorkville University and Toronto Film School's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the classroom and ensuring also that we are providing a discrimination and harassment free environment. There's a number of different areas that this plan has been focusing on, one of which is communications and making sure that we um, are visibly showing the diversity that is reflected within our communities. Um, so you're seeing these lovely graphics as well, which are, are part of this slideshow um, and which are, are very much taken from our diversity calendar, which I'll be talking about in a, um, a few slides. And this, this really makes an impact in making sure that um, our diverse students, faculty and staff feel that they are seen um, in our communications, whether that's internally or externally uh, on our social media platforms as well. Uh, we also have a focus in this plan on diversity data collection. So that's looking at um, providing opportunities for our community members to self-disclose when it comes to the various diversity dimensions that make up their identity so that we can get a better understanding of their needs and how we can um, uh, effectively create uh, more improved programs as well. Um, there's a policy review aspect to this plan as well. So we've been really looking at our various policies and procedures from a diversity, equity and inclusion lens. Uh, another aspect of this plan is training and capacity building, where we're looking at uh, promoting and providing webinars and workshops on various DEI matters. Um, so this webinar, for example, would definitely fit under that type of capacity building so that we're um, generating more awareness about DEI within our community. And uh, another huge part of this plan um, is our diversity advisory councils, which we've convened uh, earlier this year and are made up of a diverse cross-section of your peers um, and also other members of our Yorkville and Toronto Film School communities and these are very much a mechanism whereby uh, everyone can um, provide feedback on any diversity, equity and inclusion matters uh, that they feel are important to them and generally the plan really does focus on creating safe spaces for dialogue uh, where we can begin to talk about um, DEI issues which are very complex and, and can also be um, emotionally charged and challenging as well, but we're definitely here uh, to help you navigate that. So I wanted to go into a bit more detail on our fabulous YU and TFS Student Diversity Advisory Councils. So as I mentioned, um, this is made up of a, a number of different amazing people who are very passionate about DEI. Um, and this is a great venue where you as a student can bring up DEI issues that matter to you, either through your peers that are on these advisory councils and who I'll be introducing in a second, um, or through myself. 
itself. Uh, we have more extensive information on the members and their bios on our websites. Um, and we're all working collectively at YU and TFS to promote DEI and ensure that student voices are heard when it comes to decision making. Um, and these particular uh, members were um, selected through an application process. So that's certainly something that in the future students can get involved in when we have another recruitment drive. Um, but right now, these are the members of the YU Student Diversity Advisory Council members. And I would welcome you um, to definitely get in touch with any of them. We have Sura Al Mansour, who's a Bachelor of Business Administration student, Devani Savalia, who's a Bachelor of Interior Design student, Demi Babatunde and Clay Roth, who are both MACP students in our counseling program. Um, of course, our, our wonderful co-host of this webinar, Dr. Deirdre Pickerel, who's the Dean of Student Success, um, and two people who many of you may know because of their uh, wonderful work coordinating um, our student life activities. So Ali Noor, who's the Student Life Coordinator in Ontario, and Pauline Tiongson, who's the Student Activities Coordinator in BC. Um, so as I mentioned, please feel free to reach out to any member if there's something that you'd like to bring uh, to the forefront um, of the organization when it comes to DE&I. On the TFS side, our Student Diversity Advisory Council members are Hossam al Agbari, who's in the Film Production Program, Brooke Carton, who's at the Toronto Film School Online Video Production Program, Linka Nitarika, who is in the Acting for Film, TV, and Theatre program, and Balahan Gurel, who's in the TFSO Writing for Film and TV program. And of course, again, our Dean of Student Success, uh, Deirdre Pickerel. So again, definitely welcome you to get in touch with um, any of these members. I did want to highlight the diversity calendar that I was speaking about before as well. Um, this calendar was launched earlier this year and it's available on both my YU and my TFS and it's very much about raising awareness and respecting uh, the diversity um, of the cultural faith uh, based days of significance um, that many of our community members uh, are a part of and they celebrate. Um, it's also got a functional aspect to it. So I would highly recommend referring to the tool when you're planning for any absences from assignments. Um, and I would recommend and encourage you to get in touch with the Academic Accommodations and Accessibility Office if you need to request um, such an accommodation uh, because you will be away, for example, uh, for um, a test or an assignment related to your program or course. Um, so this is uh, one of our, our great initiatives that uh, has been launched and very much informs um, our communications for the rest of the year and um, promoting and highlighting the different celebrations in our community. So now I'm gonna get into the last part of the webinar, which is really about um, common student issues that are related to diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, in the classroom uh, and in the university and film school environment, and some tips and guidance on how to navigate these. Uh, so the first of which is really focusing on our in-person and virtual interactions with classmates and others, um, whether that's through WhatsApp chats, social media platforms, like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, these are certainly wonderful tools to help us stay connected. Uh, however, we definitely encourage um, making sure that these types of interactions are done in, in a respectful manner that uh, takes into consideration the dignity uh, of all of our um, classmates and faculty and staff. Um, there may be discussions that you're having that um, you know, you, th you think might be private, but based on what's actually being spoken about and the context, it might be in the context of a group project uh, where you're speaking with other classmates. Um, I would just highly advise to be aware of, of what we're saying and, um, you know, being mindful that we're, we're not saying something that, you know, we wouldn't want uh, a third party to see just in case, um, you know, something were to go wrong. Um, in addition to that, I would also recommend um, just generally, I think this is for all of us, we are really trying to avoid disrespectful 
uh, abusive behaviors, um, you know, anything where we might be violating someone else's boundaries. So if someone else has said uh, no to us, um, to a request that we've made, that we just want to respect when they are um, setting those parameters out. And of course, uh, not engaging in, in any harassing behaviors as well. Um, unacceptable behaviors that have consequences, and this is very much uh, a part of our existing TFS and YU policies, especially the student code of conduct, um, is that things that would not be tolerated are threats, intimidation, uh, displays of racism, sexism, sexual harassment, sexual assault, um, ableism, anti-Black racism, anti-Indigenous sentiment, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, and any other type of prejudice or hatred towards an identifiable group. And that includes unnecessary physical contact, uh, suggestive remarks or gestures, and offensive pictures or jokes as well. In terms of um, some other tips related to the classroom and assignments, uh, we would definitely encourage you to try and get out of your comfort zone, especially when in group assignments. I think that's a, a key opportunity to be able to work with um, a variety of people from different backgrounds, perspectives and working styles and also learning styles. And this is really what prepares us for our own careers and the working world and, and our life ahead. Um, as you will definitely encounter uh, these variety of perspectives um, in the working world as well. Um, so as I mentioned here on, on the slide, whether you are new to Canada or not, um, definitely take advantage of the experience of, of being here and tapping into so many diverse cultures and experiences um, because it'll definitely uh, give you a more fulsome perspective um, and exciting uh, experience as well during your life as a student here. Um, in addition to that, I, I did want to address uh, a specific inclusion issue that sometimes we do see in groups and group work. Um, so we would request that you please speak in English when you are in group assignments or in class related activities. And that's really to help everyone feel included and respected. Um, obviously, when we're working in groups, we also need to understand uh, the directions and the instructions um, that are being given by our various uh, group members. So it's, it's also just just um, from a functional perspective, it really helps when we can all um, stick to English. And this also relates to student social activities as well, where we're really trying to create um, and foster a more inclusive uh, social experience for our students as well. But of course, this does not prevent you from speaking um, in your own language or another language on your own time. So just wanted to highlight uh, some of those parameters and, and guidance around that issue. Um, in addition to that, some of the other feedback that we've gotten from our, our international students in particular is that, of course, being at university, being at the film school, you are engaging with students from all different kinds of cultures and backgrounds. Um, and some of our international students have mentioned that um, sometimes they do feel shy opening up just due to uh, the level of fluent, their level of fluency in English, or perhaps um, a misconception about the image of, of their country of origin. Um, and they've told, uh, they've expressed that sometimes this causes them to be self-conscious and um, more hyper-vigilant about that. And it, it really kind of pre, uh, creates a barrier in terms of helping, um, in terms of allowing them to interact with their colleagues and making friends. So just something that we all want to be uh, conscious about and that we are actively, actively confronting our own unconscious and conscious biases about um, someone's abilities, uh, maybe based on how well we think they speak English or um, other aspects of um, how they're acclimating to, to Canada and their new home. Um, so this very much impacts their access to a wholesome university and school experience. Um, and it's it's a, a really important thing for all of us to be aware of that um, and look at how we can make people feel more included and welcome. 
Um, another key aspect that I did want to address before we get into the question and answer period is that the classroom is very much a place for debate and exchange of thoughts. Uh, when it comes to diversity and inclusion conversations, it's inevitable that this will uh, sometimes become uncomfortable. So we, we do have to sometimes have uncomfortable conversations where people disagree with each other. Um, and it is possible to do this while remaining respectful of our differences at the same time. Time. And a, a very common issue that we see a lot in the post-secondary context is um, this balancing act between academic freedom of expression with uh, human rights protections as well. So making sure that we're respecting the dignity of all people and that there are no expressions of hate towards any person or group. Um, so like any right in, um, in Canada and, and in our society, academic freedom of expression is not not um, absolute and unlimited. Uh, we're always making sure that um, you know this is this is definitely taking into consideration um, equity-seeking populations as well and the impact of speech uh, that may um, look as if it's uh, in the realm of hate or or harassment um, or discrimination. Um, so I just want to end with saying that the classroom is very much the best place for discussions on diversity and looking at your class materials through different lenses as well and through the perspectives of different groups. And that's certainly something that we welcome at Yorkville University and Toronto Film School and the DEI office is absolutely committed um, to supporting those conversations as well. So I look forward to continuing um, to work with you all and, and helping to facilitate that in a way um, that helps us move forward in, in a positive and respectful way. I do want to wrap up uh, this part of the webinar before we get into the DEI questions and answers. But as I mentioned, I welcome you to connect with me at my email address, which is tjaferi at yorkvilleu.ca. So thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining us for the webinar portion. I'm going to hand it over to Deirdre to help us navigate the question and answer period. Thanks. So I did put in the chat that we'll be starting to have questions, and we've already had, had at least one come in. So don't hesitate. We've got some time. Um, uh, while TJ is here, uh, let's get some questions to her. So I have, don't worry about raising your hand or anything. Just pop right into the Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen and I will get to as many questions as I can. Um, so we did have a, a, a first question, TJ. So thank you for running this, this webinar. So, um, I'm just wondering if we can get the record of the event and wondering how I can reach out, to, uh, reach the community members. I think that that's the, um, the Diversity Advisory Council. So I'll let everybody know that we are actually live streaming on YouTube right now so you can Rewatch this session and many others anytime you like uh, by navigating to going to YouTube, navigating to the Yorkville University channel, and uh, you'll generally find us under the live stream sub channel. I'm not really sure if that's the right um, the right language. And then I see Tamina, you're putting us up in the chat. So do you want to tell us what that is? Yeah, so I'm just uh, addressing this question about uh, the, the, the members of the Diversity Advisory Council. So these are the pages that have all of their bios and um, they're, they're freely available if you want to look uh, up their name in our Outlook directory. Um, so that's how you can learn a bit more about our uh, amazing members and, and what they bring to this council and how you can um, get in touch with them and, and get to know them. Uh, so yeah, uh, for sure, this will be recorded and typically what we do is is we put it up on YouTube. Um, so if you just stay tuned to our both Yorkville University and Toronto Film School uh, YouTube channels, we typically upload it in a couple of days and you're more than welcome to uh, share it as well. Thanks, TJ. So another question, um, has the DEI strategic plan for Yorkville and Toronto Film School been made public for review? So that's a really good question. Right now, we're currently in uh, the process of consultations and, and this is something that will also need to be uh, officially approved by our board. So we're still in that process. Um, and that's certainly why we do these types of sessions as well for everyone um, and for the public as well to see, uh, you know, highlights of what we are doing in this plan. Um, so that is definitely something that will be on, uh, on our radar for the horizon 
horizon um, upcoming in the future. But thank you so much for that question. And yeah, if you if you have any particular questions about the plan, please do feel free to reach out to me as well. Perfect. So we have a, um, uh, got, well, questions are coming in fast. Um, how should a student approach a teacher who may have microaggressions, so racially motivated or underlying, without coming off as defensive or, or offensive? <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good um, question. And I think that it's also very complex too, because I think depending on the student's own diversity dimensions, they may have their own reservations about why they want to bring something up or they don't want to bring something up. I think the best way to approach it is to have a conversation um, with the professor or the instructor. Sometimes it may not be uh, the best time to actually do that in class. Um, depending on the circumstances. I don't know, maybe you are comfortable doing that, but I know that sometimes students will approach the instructor um, privately and have a, con a frank conversation with them about, you know, I heard um, this being said in class or, or such and such a comment, and this is how it made me feel. And I think that's a really great way of being able to express to an instructor um, who, you know, they may not have intended it as well, but obviously when we're looking at uh, equity, we're looking at the impact on the student. So I think that's really an effective way um, to build that relationship with your professor or your instructor while also helping um, helping to have an open, honest dialogue where nobody feels like you're saying judge or, or that they're getting defensive. And I think sometimes if you're putting someone on the spot in front of the rest of your classmates, um, that may just be a normal, human reaction to kind of get your defenses up so that's the um you know course of action that i would propose is is the best way to move forward yeah thanks tj if i might add uh Sura and i are having a conversation in the in the chat just about this notion of kindness and it may seem you know I, i've said to Sura that i don't think it's naive or or foolishly optimistic to say if we could start from a pos position of being kind then you know then then we're we're projecting that and if we can also receive that, 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 that the person is coming at me with an intention of being kind, I think it can really help um, stop that visceral reaction that often happens around difficult conversations and these can be quite difficult. So if we can hold on to that, I have kind intentions and the person that I'm talking to has kind intentions, then it can often set the tone. <laughs> a little bit better. Mm. So a couple more questions. So how will someone report an offense and will that be confidential? So in terms of reporting an offense, we do have our current uh, policies on discrimination and harassment. And so if that's the type of um, issue that you are trying to report. Typically that goes through um, our student conduct officers. So there are specific student conduct officers at both Toronto Film School and Yorkville University. And you can get to know who those are through student services. Um, and that's who you would provide uh, your complaint to. And, and typically it's looked into and investigated. Um, and of course it's confidential. Only the people that need to be dealing um, with that complaint will know about uh, the, the the details of it. Um, so that's really important to, to reassure you that that confidentiality is, is also very much respected. Mm -hmm. um, there's another um, question that I, uh, um, is how do we deal, so I think the person's looking for advice, how do we deal with a problematic student when it's in a forum outside of your film? Right. So that's also definitely um, something that happens sometimes where things are spilling outside of the university as well. In our policies, such as our prevention uh, of sexual violence policy, for example, um, that doesn't necessarily absolve someone of responsibility. If there is a connection, um, you know, back to the educational uh, sphere and that and that relationship as students or as peers, um, that's something that people really need to take very seriously um, because obviously you know that's something that um, can be a gray area when it when it comes to uh, you know legalities uh, but I think the the message that needs to be uh, gotten across is that um, we need to be very careful in, in all of our interactions um, so it may be that something is occurring outside of the um, school sphere but it's then being brought 
back into it when we're in the classroom and when we're interacting uh, with faculty and students and staff. Um, so that would definitely need to be looked at obviously on a case by case basis, but um, generally I think it is important to be extremely mindful of that and that um, there, those parameters can be gray and they can be fluid. Um, so it doesn't necessarily guarantee that um, there's a neat line that we can say this happened completely outside of the school context, um, whereas, you know, whereas it didn't. So that's just something that I think we should keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. Um, so uh, just another comment in the chat. We're, we, we actually don't have any open questions at this point. Um, I agree with your comments. I often find professors to be open to conversation. And the recommendation is to email and schedule a phone call or Zoom meeting. And that's kind of the piece I wanted to pick up on. I think Sometimes I see students that have to have difficult conversations either with each other or with their instructors and they do it in email because that can feel safer, but actually there's so much lost in communication just when it's in writing. And mm -hmm. it's very easy for people to pick up tone that isn't intended. So as difficult as it can be, I would tend to really recommend in any of these scenarios that you're actually talking to somebody um, either on the phone, in person, or on Zoom, where you just, you get the vocal inflections and all of those sorts of things that can help with communication. Absolutely. I think that yeah. that's definitely key, especially for these emotionally charged um, conversations yeah. that we have around DEI issues. If I can just look at you and, you know, and you can see me, we can really convey some of the more, I guess, deeper emotions that are just not able to get across through email. Yeah, and I think it's, I thought, personally, I find it easier if I'm really struggling to figure out how to say something. When I'm talking to somebody, I can say, I don't know how to say this. So right. I'm just going to say it <laughs> and then hope that we can understand that I'm, I'm really trying to come from a good place and I might not have the right words. And it's easier to have that when you're having this back and forth exchange than trying to, I would never write, I don't know how to say this in an email and then say something, right? Like, it's just a little bit easier to, um, to acknowledge to the other party that this is a difficult conversation and you're not really sure if you have all the right words and, and you're not trying to offend, but you, you're, you're seeking the language and maybe that person can help you with the language. But once you start having a, a, you know, this, a back and forth and make it a conversation, you know, as opposed to these things in, in emails that can often go so, or texting. Oh my gosh, you never have Absolutely. these conversations by text message. Spell out your words, use your punctuation. Like there's nothing that goes wrong faster than when you're trying to abbreviate because you're type of debt. Um, so let's take this one last question. I'm really just conscious of time. Um, will there be any event for students to meet and interact with each other people along with their culture? Yeah, so one of the great things that we do have on, on both the TFS side and the YU side, but um, definitely I think if you're at YU, you would see a lot of the great student life activities that our coordinators, both Ali Noor in Ontario and Pauline Tiongson um, in BC are involved in. Um, and they're often putting on these amazing events where people are able to showcase their culture. So for example, actually today, July 20th um, in the evening at 9 p.m. Eastern time in, uh, uh, in why you engage now, which is the group for Ontario, um, there is an amazing, uh, I think, live performance virtual event that's happening where students can um, showcase their talents. Uh, so I think it's going to be really exciting, and I would highly recommend that you get in touch uh, with Ali Noor if you'd like to register uh, to come out for that. But um, those are typically the types of events that are that are happening virtually for the time being um, at both YU and, and TFS. Um, so I would definitely recommend you get in touch um, with your program advisors. Sometimes they are also able to uh, direct you to what's going on uh, on the TFS side as well. Um, so yeah, those are some of the exciting events that we've had so far. Yeah, so we've had a question. How do, how do we join? So step one sure. would be to contact your program advisor and, uh, and get them to um, get you connected with the, the various groups that the two uh, student activity and student life coordinators uh, do that. And Tamina's put in the chat, the why you engage now. Um, so I think, um, well, we've got one last question that's just popped in, TJ. Uh, 
Oh, okay. This is an interesting question. Um, hi, thank you for this informative webinar. I apologize for my lack of knowledge around this. Never apologize. Just keep asking questions. Um, I'm wondering if we should include our pronouns when signing documents or emails. Yeah, so that's definitely something um, that's very much uh, recommended. And when it comes to pronouns, we're also sensitive that it's it's something that's self voluntarily disclosed. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for example, you know, I have them. Many people have them, and we are looking at operationalizing that more throughout our organization as well, so that um, more people have an opportunity to do that. But that's something that I would recommend doing if you feel comfortable um, doing that in your own signature. Um, so that that's definitely a great way to show more inclusivity towards people who are gender diverse as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, that's it. Uh, we've had some great comments in the chat, some fantastic questions. Um, we will do this again. I don't know when, but we are going to do this again. I can't quarterly, remember. Quarterly, yes. Quarterly. So yeah. whatever that means for us, probably in the fall. Probably in the um, fall around October. Yeah. yeah, so the presentation tends to be really similar because we've always got new students coming in, but the conversations that we have are always different because, of course, it depends on our attendees. So I really encourage people to come back. I think you take away a little bit more out of every session. I know I do. And uh, don't hesitate to reach out, um, whether it's to myself, to TJ, or to anybody on the diversity uh, council. We're here to help you. And if you've got suggestions for activities, then, you know, reach out to, I know in the Student Success Center, we've done lots of events for students that were student asked, you know, it's like, could you do X? And if we can do it, we will, we will, um, we will make it happen. We, we can't say yes to everything, but boy, we darn sure try. So okay. thank you everybody for taking the time today, TJ. It's always good to see you and, and, and learn you from so you. Thanks so much for doing this. So Sarah, you know what's coming because I always end our events. I wish you all well. Enjoy the rest of your day and please be kind to one another. Take care.